February or March of 2023 is whenever I initially started studying. I uh, got a few months into it, um, was making good progress, and then I kind of fell off a little bit. I had a little, uh, there's just like some uh, kind of trouble. I think the the course prepared me very well. I think that the what I was doing outside of it, uh, I do like that the course kind of like gave me like a, uh, a good support. Students, for whatever reason, just go off the trajectory, right? And then um, I work with them and bring them back. Um, so the other important lesson that I think that comes from your story is the fact that your journey is that you have to be consistent. Hi, Chris. Hi, Wasim. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. You are done with your Christmas shopping, holiday shopping already? I am. Just a few more things. Um, I need to pay just like small stuff like candy. I'll throw in with uh, some other stuff just to support the other gift. But I'd say like 85% done. Accessorize it a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, Chris, um, 2024 has been a great year for you, right? You got your FE exam done. Uh, in first attempt, correct, with me? Mm -hmm. How was your FE exam preparation journey? That's basically what you're going to be discussing in this interview. So if you can give me a brief overview when you graduated, when you started thinking about FE exam prep, and when you got really started with it. Yeah. So I uh, graduated in, I think, July of 2022 from the University of Louisville. And then I started working at a power company um, pretty soon after I graduated. And then for the rest of 2022, I kind of took a break from school a little bit and just focused on work. Um, I knew that FU was kind of something I wanted to do, but I was just taking a little break. So then I waited till I think February or March of 2023 is whenever I initially started studying, I uh, got a few months into it, um, was making good progress, and then I kind of fell off a little bit. I had a little, uh, there's just like some uh, kind of trouble in, uh, just with, uh, in my personal life a little bit, and then I kind of fell off for a few months, but I didn't necessarily forget about it, and then... Um, and I do appreciate, I do remember uh, you, re you uh, kind of reaching out, kind of asking like, hey, how's it going? What's up? Um, I see you're in the course. I have you, you know, you're kind of looking for progress updates and uh, I do appreciate that. And then that was kind of, I guess one of the things that kind of spurred me, I was like, man, maybe I really should just uh, get back into it. I mean, if I, now would be the best time to do it. Um, so then um, after taking a little time off, to kind of collect myself, I uh, went back. <clears throat> I got back into the course. Um, I I think the the course prepared me very well. I think that the what I was doing outside of it, uh, I do like that the course kind of like gave me like a uh, a good support to uh, what I needed to study. Um, whenever I was kind of doing it on my own a little bit, I felt like there was the uh, a lot I didn't even know was gonna be on the test and I didn't, uh, I had no way of knowing, but in the course it was like, um, it was all kind of like brought together. There were good resources, good videos. Um, so then I started back studying towards the end of 2023 and then in uh, 2020, Beginning of 2024 is whenever I really kind of started uh, leaning on the gas pedal a little bit. Uh, I think probably the two, two months, two, three months leading up to whenever I uh, was ready to take my test is whenever I was putting in the most uh, time, probably like, I'd say at least 20, probably at least 20 hours a week, probably a little more like 2025. But I remember the um i was doing a lot of uh the practice tests on uh sundays i think i had three practice tests for my uh to utilize so then um i think i got to like 80 percent 
80, 85% done with the course. And then I would do a practice test on Sunday, like the full length one. It was like six or uh, six or seven hours or however long it was. And then I'll do those on Sundays. And then the uh, week I kind of spend going over my answers and then the sections that I didn't do that well on, those are the ones that I'd go back and review in the course. And then the following weekend, I would go on to the next practice test. And then I did that for about, um, until I did each practice test twice, so about six weeks. Um, and then once I kind of went through that, I felt pretty confident in myself. And I remember being pretty nervous for the test, um, being in there. Uh, I remember my stomach was like turning at like, while I was, like sitting in the, the lobby and everything. <clears throat> um, but I did feel like I was uh, well prepared. There's like a lot of resources in the, uh, the materials and it's uh, hard to see, like it's hard to soak up all the all of the material. But I think if you go through everything, um, you'll soak up a lot more than you think. Um, and you would kind of be going through questions and tests and you all have at least seen everything like you won't uh, questions won't come up and that are just completely out of the blue. Uh, you at least have like a basic, like, oh, I know this, is, like for this question, I need to be on page like 385. Like that's whenever yeah. like uh, these kind of topics start to show up. Maybe there's something that's gonna uh, help me out here or lead me to what I need, or at least kind of give me a, an, a good edu educated guess. And yeah, I uh, definitely, I've uh, recommended the course to uh, the people that I work with, whenever they are talking about getting the F, uh, taking the FE, and then I have, uh, uh, I started studying for the PE, and I am pretty excited about that. Um, I think we talked a little bit about it before, but it does feel like uh, very applicable to what I'm doing. And there was a uh, like some stuff in the <clears throat> in the FE, I wasn't. Um, like some of the uh, coding and computer science stuff. Yeah, I, computer systems, computer networks, digital yeah, systems. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I knew I had to do it, but some of the tests, it was a little bit of a struggle sometimes to get myself to really like hammer down on it. But a lot of this stuff, like I'll be talking to people at my work about uh, stuff that I'm kind of trying to uh, learn about in the FE course. And they're talking about how they actually use it pretty often. And then even some of the sections, like some of the uh, <clears throat> kind of like overcurrent relay settings. You're talking about the PE, PE course, yeah, not the FE. Yeah. yeah, those yeah. are two sections that I'm very excited about. That, oh, yeah. um, Big time. Big yeah. Time. Thanks and, a lot for that uh, detailed overview, Chris. Uh, the few things that stand out to me, a lot of folks think that FE electrical or the FE exam in general is just for new graduates. Now you can take a uh, glass half full or glass half empty approach because what your journey showcases is that even if you're a new graduate you still have to put in the time and effort mm -hmm. correct even if you're a recent grad you're a young guy right life will still happen we are all humans right personal professional travel health tons of stuff can go wrong you started your journey in 2023 but you kept at it despite, you know, derailing a little bit. And then when you were going through the program, I make a point of staying in touch as much as humanly possible with uh, my students. Um, and uh, at the end of every live training session, I reach out to all of my students and be like, you were enrolled in the program. When are you planning to take the exam? And some of the students get back to me and they're like, oh, we see we already took the exam. We passed it. I'm like congratulations others are scheduled to take the exam and some students for whatever reason just go off the trajectory right and then um, i work with them and bring them back um so the other important lesson that i think that comes from your story is the fact that your journey is that you have to be consistent right in the last phase of your exam preparation as you were saying you were taking practice exams six seven hour uh um the morning session afternoon session combined um computer simulated the ones in my program so knowledge consolidation phase is equally important 
even for recent graduates like yourself. Um, sometimes I find that if you have been putting in time and effort over, you know, three months, four months, five months, whatever your journey is, but if you skip the last one, two, or maybe three weeks of knowledge consolidation, that can actually overshadow everything else. Because the fact of the matter is that for the most part, you have been preparing section by section, right? So for example, if you complete electronics and you're given a bunch of questions, uh, either in the quizzes, I have quizzes after every lecture, right? Or the mini exam, or you're doing the problem set from a study guide. To be quite honest, it's easy to tackle those questions once you have just gone through a bunch of lectures. But if I ask you OPAMP, if I ask you BJTs, NMOS, PMOS, JFATs, even four weeks after you have completed, it just becomes more challenging, correct? And that's what the knowledge consolidation phase does. So. Uh, I'm glad that you did put in the time and effort, even at the tail end of your preparation in bringing everything together. Um, as far as your motivation is concerned, more on a mindset, psychological standpoint, how were you able to keep yourself going? Because you're working full time as well, right? I mean, your recent graduate, that is an advantage or a leg up that you have uh, compared to majority of my students who are five plus years out of school. Well, what was your inner conversation, inner talk that kept you going, especially in those sections that you mentioned, like computer systems, networks, digital systems, software, coding, and so on? I would say uh, a lot of the, uh, <clears throat> at, like, at my work, there is a, a few others that have kind of been, uh, like, since I started working there, there have been, like, four or five people that have kind of always been talking about, like, oh, take the FE, take this, and I was the... Um, I guess the first one of the group to kind of sign up and I, a part of me didn't want to, uh, I guess it was kind of social pressure. Like I didn't want to fail in the eyes of my, um, uh, kind of compatriots. And, um, I guess I also wanted to be kind of more, a, more of a more knowledgeable individual in my field. <clears throat> and, I want to kind of be better prepared. I want to, I mean, I eventually want to move up in roles. I know that I want to um, be given bigger projects. And um, I guess this kind of shows like motivation and also just kind of like <clears throat> a intrinsically just kind of showing myself that like I can set goals for myself and that I can achieve. Um, I can kind of commit to something with a, like without giving up. And uh, I do think I am kind of a goal-oriented person. I kind of need a little uh, uh, something I need to kind of be working towards or in kind of the back of my mind. And uh, that was kind of the thing that I had set uh, for myself, <clears throat> especially whenever I'm uh, like, if I go do anything like athletic, like with headphones, like if I'll go on like a run or something. Um, I, it seems kind of silly, but I'm, I'm like, kind of like a big, like visualization kind of guy. So I'm like with my headphones, like running, visualizing me, like passing this test and like telling people about it and be like, Oh yeah. But yeah. So, uh, there's a, a few things that were kind of keeping me, <clears throat> keeping me motivated. That's great. And these are all fundamentals. You know, if I categorize this, because I like to study about this a lot as well. And I think motivation is something that is part partially disciplined, partially um, intrinsic, partially extrinsic. So the peer pressure that you had around you, if I can call it that, it was healthy. It was a positive peer pressure, sort of a healthy competition. Um, secondly, proving it to yourself that you are cut out to get this done. And also incentivizing yourself that, listen, I want to improve my skill set, right? Did part of your undergraduate studies get affected by COVID? Because I think you belong to that group, right? You graduated in 2022. So I'm assuming that at least a year or two, it was basically off campus, correct? Online? Yeah. I think most of, a lot of my junior year was uh, <clears throat> through uh, kind of video classes. And then we like come in for tests and we had to sit like, like it's like an auditorium of like 
uh, 200 seats, but there's only like 15 people in there. So yeah. we're all like sprinkled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I asked that because I have noticed uh, some of my students who enroll uh, new graduates who enroll and they during one-on-one Zoom onboarding that I do personally with every single student. Like Wasim, I want to tell you that a couple of years of my undergraduate studies were affected by COVID. So I feel that I lost out in terms of a little bit deeper in-person learning. So I'm looking at your course as an opportunity to actually brush up all the core concepts. And by the time they're done, they tell me that, you know, it seems like I didn't miss anything because now my level of understanding is um, really like I feel confident about the content. And that was your secondary motivation to understand things better. And the third motivation, if I can tell you, like uh, byproduct is that about 25% of your P power preparation has been directly and indirectly been taken care of already. We have gone through power systems in detail. We went through Delta Y three phase square root three. And if you remember in the on demand and live training, I used to mention that guys, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into power systems because all of it is going to carry over to P power, right? Same thing with circuit analysis. Hopefully you have a much, much better understanding of KCL, KVL, superposition, Thevenin, and Norton. Um, a lot of it will carry over into section number three of power systems where we discuss equivalent circuits of induction motors, synchronous motors, transformers, and section four transmission line. So I really appreciate your time, uh, Chris. This has been a great conversation. And um, I think there was a lot to learn from your journey. The fact that your recent graduate does not guarantee that, you know, things are necessarily going to be all, you know, it's going to be a walk in the park. You still have to put in time and effort. I tell my students that even if Einstein were to take the FE exam, he'd still have to prepare for it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to cover, right? It's not that things are necessarily difficult. Once you put in the time and effort, it is doable. I have had 1990s graduate. I have internationally trained engineers. I have had uh, non-electrical engineers go through the program and get the job done. But you have to put in the time and effort. It's almost like personal fitness. You mentioned about running, right? If you require a certain physique, it's not just going to happen. Okay, maybe naturally you would be more adapt at, you know, things may come easier to you. Okay, genetically, maybe you are gifted and whatnot. But whatever the scenario is, nobody gets to a specific, let's say, body fat percentage or a specif- a specific runtime in terms of completing a mile within 10 minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, six minutes. Completing a mile within six minutes will take tons and tons and tons of effort, right? There's no, like, you cannot just plan for it. And a lot of people, unfortunately, may never be able to achieve that, right? Uh, similarly with swimming, I mean, there are certain milestones that really require tons of effort. Similarly, if you look at the FE exam, okay, you may ha- be excellent, a 4.0 GPA student, recent graduate and whatnot, you still have to put in some time and effort. And there are tons of resources out there, free resources as well, YouTube and whatnot. Um, it depends how busy you are. And if you're looking for effective exam prep resource, as you mentioned, the on-demand and the live training program that I have, it is designed to streamline your exam preparation efforts. I agree. Thanks a lot for your time, Chris. I look forward to helping you with your P-Power exam very soon. Oh, I look forward to it too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. On a weekly basis, I'm creating content for FE Electrical and P-Power exam preparation. I also discuss topics related to electrical engineering with a focus on power systems engineering. If you'd like to learn more about my FE Electrical and P-Power exam preparation programs, please visit my website, study4fe.com.